The last time Iraqis went to the poll, it was 2010, and the run-up to the departure of U.S.-led forces. This time, they're long gone, and the sectarian violence is at its worst since 2008. Traffic banned this Wednesday, Election Day, to prevent car bombings in Baghdad, voting pretty much off the table in mostly Sunni Anbar province, where jihadists have capitalized on the simmering anger with Baghdad's authorities. They've joined the fight there. So what's left of Iraq and its democracy? The last time around, it took 10 months to form a government. A fallout then later ensued between Shiite Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki and his Sunni Vice President, uh, Vice, Vice Prime Minister, excuse me, Maliki again tipped as the front runner, but the spike in violence again undermining his credibility. Questions about federalism and how to divvy up oil revenue remain unanswered. And then uh, there's the link between major players and outside forces. How much are Maliki and the likes of powerful Shiite leader Muqtada al-Sadr, their own men, or beholden to neighboring Iran? After toppling Saddam Hussein, have the U.S. and U.K. washed their hands of Iraq's problems today? In the France 24 debate, we're looking at Iraq voting under the gun. With us to talk about it, he's the deputy editor-in-chief of the French weekly news magazine Paris Match, Régis Le Sommier. Thank you for, for being with us. I want to thank as well um, uh, Iraqi political commentator Abdelrahman Dara Suleiman for, for being with us. Um, also joining us from Abu Dhabi, Hadil al Sayeg, senior reporter for uh, daily newspaper The National. Welcome back to the show. And welcome to Zaid Al-Ali. She, a senior advisor on constitution building. In fact, if I have it not mistaken, you helped to uh, draft the constitution in, 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 in Iraq. Uh, joining us uh, uh, from Sana'a in Yemen. Thank you for being with us. The France Van Get debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and on Twitter, our hashtag F24Debate. Polls have closed now uh, in Iraq. Uh, lots of people at the voting stations. Uh, there were uh, there was fears that uh, people would stay away. Obviously, 70% of uh, Anbar province unable to vote. And then throughout the campaigning, there was this specter of violence. More than 2,200 killed since the start of the year. That's on course for the biggest spike since the height of the insurgency. More now with Nicholas Rushworth. Baghdad last Friday, and explosions tore apart a campaign rally in the east of the city. That attack was part of a wave of sectarian violence nationwide in the days before the vote. Iraq is currently going through its worst unrest in years. Security for this election is massive. We have set up three lines of defense at each of the polling stations. The first is the security forces and federal police right next to the stations. The second is the other forces and troops patrolling around these areas. And the third includes special action forces and security check facilities at the entrances to the stations. The Sunni Shiite violence now is approaching levels seen from 2006 to 2008, when tens of thousands of people died. Emboldened by successes in Syria, the Al Qaeda inspired Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant is gaining in strength and waging war on the edges of Baghdad. It wants to bring down the Iraqi capital. There is no vote in parts of the western Anbar province where security forces are fighting Islamist and tribal militias. The battle there, which has lasted four months, is for control of Ramadi and Fallujah. We must stand together to expel the criminal terrorists and those behind them who make religious rulings declaring others to be infidels. The Iraqi Prime Minister is criticized for a return of the worst protracted violence in the country in years. While he points to jihadists coming in from neighboring Syria, critics say his heavy-handed treatment of minority Sunnis has contributed to the unrest. That's the context in which Iraqis went to the polls this Wednesday. Zaid al-Ali, first of all, can you tell us, in your view, what explains this violence and how much does it weigh on the outcome of that vote? Thanks very much for having me. Uh, can I just start by just clarifying quickly that I, I didn't actually participate in the drafting of the Constitution. I was a 
I was one person in a group of people that was advising uh, the drafters, and I played a very minor role, and I don't really want to be too closely associated with that text, considering how unsuccessful it was. But in answer to your question, uh, the violence is the result of a number of factors, one of some of which are outside of the government's control and some of which are certainly in its control. The, the ones that are outside the government's control include the, the conflict in Syria, obviously. There are regional forces that are at play as well that continue to fund extremist groups and armed factions in Iraq. But many factors are within the government's control. Your report just now alluded to the heavy-handed treatment of minorities and so on and so forth. In fact, the security services uh, mistreat everyone. It's not just the treatment of Sunnis. They're very violent. They're brutal, particularly in detention. Uh, the mistreatment is rampant throughout, and there's torture in just about every single detention center in Iraq. And it's really, really unfortunate. And it didn't, didn't need to happen. And in fact, people have been warning of the government about this for a very long time. And it plays a very uh, heavy role, a very significant role in the elections today, because uh, many people are going to be voting for Maliki because they consider that he's a strong man who can uh, bring the country back together uh, in a way that they conceive he did uh, back in 2008. Whereas many people will be very disappointed with security and will not vote for him specifically for that reason, because they consider that he's partly to blame. Many people, when I say many people won't vote for him, I don't mean merely Sunnis. I mean, Shia, people who aren't religious, people who are within uh, within a more liberal or secular group, many people won't vote for him because they consider that he's part and parcel of the problem that exists today. And the campaign uh, was a lot about the security issue. Are you suggesting then that this is all part of a strategy on the part of Nouri al-Maliki? I don't think that uh, he deliberately, uh, I, I, th I think that would be too much to, to assume that he deliberately caused for security to decline in order for him to uh, burnish his strongman images. I think that would be too much. However, you know, he's, uh, you know, he, the politics is a game of chess and he has to do, he only can play two or three, uh, two or three uh, plays at a time. So he's faced with a situation that's very violent um, in that context. He's obviously going to try to portray himself as a solution to this violent context. Um, you know, that's that's something that's very normal. But what's also very interesting is the way in which uh, his electoral rivals are reacting. So if you look at, for example, the uh, the, 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 the electoral coalition of uh, Osama al-Nujayfi, uh, which is called Mutahidun, their, uh, their, their campaign is uh, strictly in relation to violence. It's all just about uh, you have to vote for us because if not, then you may get massacred. You know that's their campaign, their campaign strategy. Other uh, uh, other rivals, particularly on the on the Shia branch, uh, many of them uh, blame Maliki for mismanaging the situation uh, with, with good reason, in my view, because you know he really has been a contributing factor to the violence. You know, and the the, uh, the 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 mistreatment of people in detention. That's one thing that I mentioned earlier. But there's also corruption, which has also played a very important role in increasing uh, insecurity particularly corruption in the security sector. You probably know, your listeners and your viewers probably know that uh, in Baghdad, they, they still use this useless and fake bomb detector as a principal, as a principal device to, 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 to search for bombs. And that's as a result of Maliki's intervention, you know, him and the people around him. Uh, so many people have very good cause to complain about this. A, a grim picture, Regis Le Sommier. And just to turn back the clock, the last time there was a general election in 2010, People were expecting doom and gloom on election day. They were expecting doom and gloom to ensue. Uh, the deterioration, though, of the situation okay. came much later. And in a way, Iraqis surprised people pleasantly, you might say, at the time. Well, Iraq has this uh, particular way of surprising people on election days, but not after. If you remember the elections in 2005, which were held by Bush, by George Bush at that time, by as being... Um, the, the manifestation of democracy in Iraq, which actually split the country because the Sunnis didn't vote and the Sunni and the Shia massively vote and really took power at that back then. Well, this was the trigger point of the civil war and those elections split the country literally. Uh, in 2010, it was a little different. The, the US were on, the, on their way out. Um, there is a, a sense of because the Iraqi have a strong sense of nationalhood, and and they want they a lot of them even if they become to different uh, um, uh, different um, groups, uh, whether they are Shi Shiite or Sunni, wants Iraq to be a nation. Um, it was a, a little better back then, but if you, you you're talking about a grim picture. 
all the problems that we see here have been the problems that were there back five years ago. Uh, nothing, you know, and talk about Maliki. Maliki is acting like the strong man, fine. But what did he do for the, the, the Ambar province? Uh, what has been done? He could have avoided the takeover of Fallujah and parts of Ramadi by, by um, uh, the um, uh, Iraqi state of, of uh, Islamic state of Iraq and al-Sham uh, recently in January. This could have been avoided by being a little smarter and not angering the population of those two towns, which are, you know, really feeling that they are uh, trapped, that they have no future in Iraq, and they are not, they don't belong uh, to to uh, to uh, to that country anymore. So this could have been done a lot smarter. Uh, Maliki chose the hard way and eventually disfranchised all these people and they turned against him. And now we have the situation where actually when you talk about Syria, uh, of the, the conflict in Syria coming over to Iraq, you have a, 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 an entire area that goes from the outskirts of Aleppo directly to Ambar, which is basically controlled by jihadists now. And this is a worry. This is a worry for everyone because it's a magnet for jihadists all over the world. It's their land, their caliphate. The fat is already there, and Maliki played a good part in that, I think. Hadil al Sayyid, do you agree? I agree. I think there is a very difficult uh, situation to deal with. Um, um, the Iraqis, from different uh, political views, have not been able to also see eye to eye. I don't see any kind of long term vision. Um, it seems like they cannot even sit on the negotiating table. Uh, to discuss immediate um, um, pressing concerns, never mind looking at a long-term strategy. So if we look, for example, at the situation between Baghdad and Erbil, nothing has been done on the side of the oil contracts, and that has been politicized um, during the elections. A lot of the Arabs are expected to uh, vote for Maliki because they see him as trying to protect uh, the oil wells and, and natural resources of the country. At the same time, the situation in, in Fallujah is triggering all kinds of uh, nationalism and patriotism. Uh, you're seeing a lot of um, people, um, you know, the, the security forces are not, um, they're not being able to control the situation. There's a lot of bodies that are being returned to families in Baghdad. At the same time, uh, economically speaking, uh, the country has been almost at a standstill. Foreign investment has almost uh, halted. If you speak to private equity, um, funds that were very bullish on Iraq um, about a year or two years ago, a lot of them have withdrawn or frozen their operations. Let me ask you, uh, first of all, Abdel Rahman Darius Luman, uh, did you vote? Yes. <laughs> you did vote, okay. I did vote. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and when, you, when you cast your ballot, what, did you, what do you think? What will be the effect of, of voting in, in this election in, in the context that our three in, previous uh, panelists are described. Uh, yes, generally, generally, if I'm, I'm looking to the voting as uh, as culture, that's mean as a, as operation as a processes, it's good that to establish a, a, a culture of democracy for a long time. I'm looking for for uh, we need to establish that. That mean the main conflict f for us it's uh, the, the, the 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 results. Uh, of elections, no other. We refused all, all kind of violence. But the main point that I, I'm agree uh, 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 about all what uh, what the gentleman and the, the lady uh, they they talk of before me. But I have some point just uh, to make the difference between the election that happened in, uh, in 2010 and uh, now. Uh, the circumstances is uh, changed a, a lot. Uh, I, I I think locally, nationally, and internationally, it's uh, it's changing a lot. Uh, the, they there were an agreement and consensus about the the personality, the character of Al Maliki, especially between United States and Iran. Uh, they, there were um, uh, uh, some national agreement about his personality at that time. Now it's not not exist that agreement. The, the 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 situation of Iran about Maliki it's not clear yet. The situation of United States about Maliki is changed because of, of the position of Maliki 
uh, 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 so it's interesting. What you're saying is, is that Maliki in 2010 was the consensus candidate, not just for Iraqis, you're saying, but Iran and the United States as well. There, there were that agreement. And today it's not exists the same force of this agreement. Maliki changing his mind many times. He turned his, uh, he promised many things and he he promised in the, in the Congress of Erbil many things with the most of the Iraqi parties. And then he changed his mind. The position about the situation uh, in Syria is considered that Maliki, he ha have to still neutral. But in fact, he su supported Bashar al-Assad. That's mean he's against, uh, in, uh, 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 really, he become against the American strategy. The situation. So the, the position of United States today in 2014 is not the same in, as it, it was in 2010. And do you think that that will have what kind of effect on voters? Will voters be voting for him because it's the only way to maybe stop the violence or will they be voting against him? I don't think that the violence, it, uh, it, uh, uh, the all the political parties looking for stopping it because the violence in fact feeding the sectarism the, the violence it's uh, it's continue the division of the iraqi people to shiites Sunni, Kurds, etc the violence today in anbar we are we we are today in the fifth month almost of the violence in anbar it's feeding the politic of maliki Maliki he wants also the division and the vote and polls to, to become not as not based on citizenship. It based on Shiite and Sunni and Kurd and Arab, etc., and Christian and Muslim. We don't want that. As Iraqi people, we want one identity, Iraqi identity, that we collect us all. Zaid Al Ali, that brings us back to a point that you made at the outset. Uh, there are uh, clerics who are big players. Uh, in, in this election, uh, there's the divide, we've been talking about it, between Sunnis and Shiites. I guess you could say there's also the divide between those who are secular and those who are religious? Yeah, that, that, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, but as a whole, I mean, Iraqis are fairly religious. I mean, there's a, even those that are religious aren't necessarily, uh, don't necessarily make, um, take their decisions based on, based on, based on their religious preferences. Uh, but Iraqis as a whole, as your previous speaker alluded to, um, Iraqis as a, whole, as a whole have not much trouble living with each other. You know, as a whole, as a population, our relationships between between each other are fairly good. You know, we don't really have the type of sectarian problems that people imagine that we do. The politicians certainly have lots of problems between themselves, and they do a very good job of exacerbating those problems a, a, as a way of increasing their own importance uh, within the existing political structure. But Iraqis uh, on their own, within their own communities, their own neighborhoods, and so on and so forth, you very rarely hear of the types of sectarian problems that you Im imagine would exist. So you don't hear, for example, you know, uh, uh, an outbreak of, uh, of violence between, between neighbors. That doesn't happen. You don't, there are lots of Arabs, for example, who live in Erbil. You don't hear of any vi Kurdish violence against the Arabs. You don't hear that. You have lots of Kurds who live in uh, Baghdad, and you don't hear violence against the Kurds who live in Baghdad, and you don't hear you maybe your viewers don't know this, but many of the uh, displaced persons who've left Anbar as a result of the violence sought refuge in Karbala province, which is uh, a province of a different religious de denomination, and they were very well welcomed in those places. They were Z very Zaid well received. Ali, I'm going to have to interrupt you. We're going to have to take a very quick break, and we'll come back. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate.